Good afternoon, everyone. I think we are ready to begin. Our keynote speaker, Father Dr. Patrick Devin, International Chairman, Shalom Center for Conflict Resolution and Reconciliation, Reverend Dr. Father Gaspar. Reverend Dr. Father Kifle Mwangaza Retreat House, Dr. Wafula, who is joining us online, and Dr. Elise Rutagamba, who is here with us, our Hekima Hitsa students, Hekima University College alumni, our visitors, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Lucy Sewe. I am an alumni of Hekima University College, the class of 2015-2017. And I stand here um, to represent the moderator for today, who will be joining us a little later. This is Bernard O'Cock. On behalf of Hekima University College, I wish to welcome all of you to honor the life of our very own Professor Omoka Wanakai, who left us approximately a year ago, and whom we refer to as a father, a mentor, and an academician. If I can just draw your attention to the program, we are done with the registration. We are going to have our opening prayer by Dr. Gaspar. Then we'll have opening remarks by Dr. Elise Mutagamboa. Then we'll have our keynote address by Father Dr. Patrick Devin. This will be followed by faculty testimonies by the late Professor Omoka's colleagues, uh, Father Gaspar Sunwa and Father Kifle Wansamo from Wangata Retreat House. Then we shall have family, re family remarks by Ms. Nasike Omoka, the daughter of Professor Omoka. Then we shall have an address from student leadership, Ms. Safina Barua. Then we will have a couple of testimonials listed there. Then Dr. Gaspar will give us the vote of thanks. And finally, the closing prayer. We shall honor uh, Professor Omoka by planting a tree and launching a plaque. Then finally, we shall invite all of you for a cup of tea, which we hope to complete by five o'clock. So without wasting any more time, let me invite Dr. Gaspar to give us an opening prayer. Thank you very much, Lucy. Precious for a while, you call the presence of um, God. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for this rare opportunity to come and celebrate the life of Professor Omoka Wanakai, whom you have called yourself to your kingdom. Good and gracious God, life belongs to you. 
Love belongs to you. Celebration of life will also belong to you. As we come together as a, a Kima University College to honor the life, to honor the friendship, to honor the academic life of your son, our Professor Moka, give us now the spirit to deepen of what all you give us in our lives, especially our families, and in a special way, we think of um, the family of Professor Moka, the life of uh, academics, the life of uh, excellency in our lives. As we come this afternoon, give us then your angels, your spirit, to give us the spirit of a celebration and gratitude for this fallen great academic, academician, a mentor, and a father. We pray for everyone here and all who are following uh, this memorial, uh, honoring of Professor Moka, to give us the grace we need in order to continue to cherish the life of Professor Moka, to cherish our own acad academic life, and to cherish our community as a Kima University College. We ask you this prayer through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me have this opportunity next to invite Father Elise Rutagambwa, Dean Hekima Institute of Peace Studies and International Relations. Welcome, sir. Reverend Dr. Patrick Divine, our keynote speaker today. Reverend Doctors, Gaspar, Ifre, members of our faculty, family members who are following us remotely, dear staff members, dear students, alumni, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen those who are here present, and those who follow us online. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I would like to extend to each one of you a warm welcome to the Kima Institute of Peace Studies and International Relations. Today, we are thrilled to honor the great scholar, the humble and very friendly man whose impactful life has touched each one of us and whoever had had the chance to engage with him. We are here to honor the life of Professor Omoka Monakai, a father, a mentor, and a true scholar. At the end of July 2021, we learned with shock and great sadness the passing of Professor Omoka Monakai. Like many cherished family members, friends, colleagues around that time, he was taken away by COVID-19. Professor Moka was a soft-spoken and humble man, a friendly person to everyone, a man who liked African tradition and wisdom. Academically, he was an incisive and rigorous researcher, a great teacher who conveyed his knowledge aptly paid a careful attention to his students and wanted to take them to the next level of excellence. As a mentor, he was a tireless listener who accompanied his students patiently and shared with them his wisdom and research skills. At the same time, 
He was a very critical mind who never allowed any mediocrity or compromised the slight, slightest standard of academic integrity. I wonder why he has made such a strong impact on his students, the college faculty members. Serving faculty member at IPSA, a man dedicated to excellent scholarship and to the ideal of peace and harmonious international relations. He trained hundreds of students who are now making a difference here in Kenya and across the entire African continent and beyond. That is My dear friends, I would like to invite you to a minute of silence as we remember this great man. If you could stand up. Thank you. Merci. Why honoring the life of Professor Omoka today in our, our institution? In addition to our duty of solidarity with his family and the imperative to honor our traditional and Christian values, there is another singular reason that Professor Omoka deserves a special place at Hipsa with fond memories. Professor Omoka liked so much this country and the continent at large, but he liked Hipsa in a special way. He saw in Hipsa the potential to develop a strong and pertinent African scholarship capable of addressing African challenges. He was keen on contextualized research while applying modern academic rigor. He believed in the relevance of African solution to African problem. That's why he strived to inculcate in this in his student. Professor Omoka left us a lot of inspiration and the duty to carry on his legacy. Honoring him today is certainly celebrating his life and his outstanding scholarship, but is also a self reminder of his duty. The challenge is with us today, and I call upon each one of us to take it up and make Hipsa the cradle of such a scholarship. Indeed, as one of the rare programs that combine free studies and the international relations of the continent, Hipsa, drawing from her Jesuit heritage of a long historical tradition of education and her rootedness in Christian values, needs to rethink its academic vocation and its duty to be a transformative force. A Jesuit, late president, one of the most innovative Salvadorian scholars of our time, once said, if the university is, to cult is the cultivator of truth and knowledge, it does so not in abstract fashion, but in a real historical way. The existence of extensive poverty and oppression represent a historical negation of truth and reason. Society, the university must function to study reality and uncover the truth so that it can participate in, in interpreting and transforming the ideological framework that sustain the unjust status quo. In other words, what Era Korea tries to emphasize but is that the university, yeah. especially a university yeah. dedicated to social sciences, cannot simply dedicate itself to the production of professionals and technicians who are insensitive to their context and who duplicate the social structures already in place. On the other hand, 
It cannot commit itself to an abstract and a historical quest for knowledge, which is divorced from the reality of immense inequalities that serve only to enforce its ideological basis. In this regard, a university should rather serve as the critical and creative conscious of society. This is precisely where we want to engage with all of you and what uh, was Professor Omoka's dream. I have no doubt that HIPSA is such a conducive environment, one that calls for solidarity and collaboration to that noble mission. So listen attentively to all interveners, the keynote speaker, the testimonials, the family, and let the Holy Spirit move you into that direction. Once again, welcome to this event, and let Professor Omoka smile as he looks down on us and feels proud that his legacy will live on. Thank you. Next, let me invite Father Dr. Patrick Devine, International Chairman, Shalom Center for Conflict Resolution and Reconciliation. Welcome. Very much. Good afternoon to everyone. First and foremost, it's really good to be here with you. We would like to be here in this institution, this institute, and to be honoring this man who became a very, very close friend of mine. And I met him here. Professor Moka and I first uh, met back in 2007. I came over here on a morning, interested to see what was the course on peace studies and international relations about. And I met Father Manuelo, I believe he might have been the director at that time. And uh, we sat for a while. And he said to me, uh, there's a class going on. Why don't you go over and sit in? So over I went and I sat in, and Professor, now Professor Mudida, was given a lecture, conflict theory, conflict management. And he was on the issue of the paradigms, the analytical paradigms. And I sat in and I went for the coffee break at was it 10 30 and 11. I went back in again. And I came over and I met Father Manuelo after the lecture. I said, I think I'll sign up. And so I began a master's. And the choice was to either do the master's here in Kenya or go to Dublin, where I had been asked to do a master's. But I was so keen on staying in Africa. And it was one of the great blessings that I discovered what was going on here. And it's a credit to the Jesuits that they put this program together, this master's program, it really is. And everything you have said, Father, I agree with. It was nearly like the keynote address what I was going to say. So some of it I will be repeating as I honor the life of Professor Omoka. So it's great to be here with you. And a lot has happened in my life uh, over the last 15 years, you can say from 2007. And a huge amount of the good things that happened have emerged from the day I walked in the door to the Peace Institute. And it was at that time I met Professor Omoka. He and Professor Modida, they supervised my master's thesis. Two wonderful men. It was incredible. During that last year, the second year, it began to dawn on me that in African conflict environments, you can say for any environment, but we are, I'm a member of the Society of African Missions, uh, that in African conflict environments where people are killed 
and maimed and displaced persistently. It's extremely difficult, if at all possible, for social and religious values, gospel values, like peace and truth and justice and mercy to take deep root, for people to live normal lives or experience through peace. And secondly, in those environments, it's extremely difficult to have any sustainable development because periodically schools, hospitals, churches, formation institutes either become inoperable or destroyed. So we don't want to forever be pouring resources as well into projects, putting them through a safe and just addressing the symptoms if we're not addressing the underlying or the root causes. And addressing the underlying and root causes was a passion of Professor Ramoka. So coming to the end of my master's thesis in 2009, I had discussions with him about the possibility that of setting up a new organization to go out into the field to really deliver what we had attained to uh, the master's program here at Edna. And he agreed to become the director of research with us, as did Professor Mudida to come on the board. And that's how it all began. So the first thing I would like to do is to say in this address is to offer our sympathy to this institution and also to express the level of feeling of all our members in Shalom. So I've just wrote a little piece here, and it really, I think, sums up how you all feel, how this institute feels, um, as well as the Shalom team. So the Shalom SCCR, Shalom Center for Conflict Resolution and Reconciliation, it's an international organization that is deeply saddened by the recent and untimely death of our highly esteemed colleague and yours, Professor Wanakai K. Omoka. He was one of the original team members of Shalom when it was officially registered in Kenya. Professor Omoka was our director of research. He was an iconic scholar who taught in many universities in the USA and Eastern Africa. In particular, he impacted significantly on the world of academia in the fields of social science, research methods, statistics, and trans social transformation. He made an immense contribution to the vision and mission of our organization. And I'm sure over the years, he made a huge contribution to the vision and mission of this institute as well. So particular to our analytical approaches to the causes of inter-ethnic conflict, religious ideological extremism, structural violence, and the persistence of marginalization and poverty. All of these areas, he had a passionate interest in them, and he really wanted to develop the skills in all who worked with them, how to analyze what are the underlying causes and how to transform them. His role was invaluable in the implementation of our research design and processes, field data collection with the local communities in violent conflict locations, data analysis, compiling research, academic and organizational policy documents, supervising conflict situational analysis briefing papers, among other relevant components. And if there's one thing Professor Omoka wanted to capture, in research, he didn't want any quasi pseudo half competent research done, baseline studies that weren't thoroughly done properly to the highest academic rigor. He wanted all research to capture the authoritative voice of the people. What were the people thinking, saying, feeling? What was their read on the situation? And that had to be captured because they were the people living in the conflict environment and directly affected by conflict uh, and crying out for the need for conflict transformation and peace building. So the research department's contribution to our work is one of the pillars of the organization's field success and growing international recognition. And since we were founded, it's just incredible the amount of lectures 
we've been asked to present in. Harvard, Paul, San Diego, Texas, Queen's University, Belfast, the Kennedy Institute in Maynooth, Ireland, and many more. And the roots of that began here as a key. That has to be stated and recognized. And I say it gratefully. And because it's, we were all the contributions worldwide and particularly in Africa. I think since we were founded, we have been involved in 700 plus interventions in conflict zones, 28 conflict environments we are working in at this moment in time. And on Monday, I will be in Mombasa with all the priests and uh, I'm sure many of the influential opinion shapers in the diocese and the bishops from Malindi and Mombasa uh, looking at the issue of religious and theological extremism. And there's not, without a question, if Professor Moka was alive and with us, he would be part of the team that's going down on Sunday and in the presentation on Monday. So with the rest of the team in Shalom, he was very active in all processes leading to conflict transformation, peace building, interreligious diapraxis, not just interreligious dialogue, but he was so keen as well to move the dialogue into praxis. And you've got people from different faiths, or even in the Christian context, different uh, denominations working together. The dialogue had to become practice. And of course, the practice is dialogue in itself. And um, the whole issue of uh, dealing with um, reconciliation, and that you know, student of reconciliation, when you, when you, after going through all the analysis, using the paradigms of realism, strategism, structuralism, peace, peace studies, conflict research of John Burton, and moving then on into conflict transformation, looking at the issues that need to be transformed at the individual level, level like psychological, emotional, spiritual, into relational, which is dealing with behavior, stereotyping, communication, on into the area of institutions, the institutions that are vital to help people meet their basic human needs and actualize their potential. And then to see what aspects of culture need to be transformed, what aspects of culture legitimize violence. So hey, that was a huge interest of Professor Zamokas, and especially as he attended workshops with us all over Eastern Africa. I mean, I can tell you stories crossing the Omo River with them of north of Lake Turkana, and the crocodiles looking in at us. And he never saw me. I, I'm sure he told you the story. They were looking in, and I don't know what happened in the boat. We were in a little tub going across. But um, he certainly didn't like crocodiles, and he was very happy when he was back from that trip. Um, but he was willing to go the extra mile, in among the Dasanek people at the time. So, of course, it's one thing bringing about peace. You have to substantiate it with inter infrastructure development. And uh, the infrastructure development and the, the, the development of institutions will really concretize the peace process that has taken off. And it's really built around um, helping the people to meet their basic needs, actualize their potential. And of course, I, I would be remiss me not to say that in all my time working in conflict environments, like just to give an example in Turkana, you have the Turkanian conflict with the Bokat in Samburu in Kenya, the Dasanak in Ethiopia, the Turkana in South Sudan, it's somewhat laid off a little bit with the Karamojang in Uganda, then you have the Nyanga, Nyanga towns. That's only one conflict circle. But just to say that in all of those environments, I've never come across a parent yet who didn't want a better future for their children. And I think it's something we should all bear in mind when we go into those environments and Professor Moka Williams them, there's always a wealth of treasure and assets in the local communities. So Professor Moka, I would say, was a very astute and a tre treasured. He was definitely a treasured friend of mine and of many others, and all who had the honor of working with him. His counsel was ever profound, whether in the guise of teaching, research, as a colleague, an acquaintance, or a family member. And our hearts are with his family, with his family. His family were over in America, and uh, it was a big shock to them uh, when it transpired what happened to him. He was in our office maybe two days before. Father Keithley, he may very well have been here as well a few days before that. 
and he was coughing. And the, our staff said to him, you know, Professor, it might be only a cold, but you need to go to the hospital. So he, of course, he did go and it was found out to be COVID. And uh, so that was on that Friday evening and the following Tuesday evening, Professor Mocha had passed on. And I have no doubt in my mind, he's with the Lord. He's a wonderful man, but he contributed to life, to human beings, to development, and everything that was said in the opening remarks and his passion for Africa. So he will be immensely missed, first and foremost, by his family. He will be missed by you, the fraternity here. He will be missed by us. And he will be missed by the marginalized and vulnerable ethnic communities living in conflict zones throughout Africa. So our sincere and heartfelt condolences to his family and loved ones. Our thoughts and prayers are with you during this sad and difficult time. Professor Omoka, as you know, he was a Quaker by faith. And uh, that was one of the great contributions. I used to often joke with him, I said, you're more Catholic than a lot of the Catholics I know. Probably it is. But he was so, so genuine and authentic. Um, so I believe myself that the spirit and presence of Professor Omoko will ever be with us. Our gratefulness for having journeyed with him in life surpasses what words can ever capture or embody. A, a few memories apart from up at the um, one of the good memories I have of him as well is we had a conference in Tangaza College um, based on research from the from the uh, Samburu Turkana conflict. And it was very highly attended by high profile figures from EGAD, um, of course, from church groups and uh, peace practitioners. But who was there that day was uh, Martin Kimani, who I believe, if I'm pronouncing his name, the present Kenyan representative on the UN Security Council, ambassador. But it was fantastic the, the discussion that went on between them. And uh, uh, that time, Dr. Gimani uh, brought up an issue or took issue with Professor Amoka about a famous scholar called Dennis Skinner. Any of you that are students or students of Amoka, you heard of Skinner. Because he absolutely gave Skinner pride of place anyhow. But I always remember by the time Professor Amoka responded, he took off at a very fine, slow pace, this, and the next thing, he made a point with great authority that even Dr. Kimani took a bow to him at the end because he explained it so well, excellently, logically, and it was indisputable the reasoning that he gave to him at that conference. Um, looking forward, let us honor him. Honor him because we are all, we are all products somewhat of the genius that he was. We are products of the knowledge he has passed on to us. And there's a great need in Africa, not just in Africa. We see what's happening around the world. There's a great need. And we have to take up the flag now. And it hurts me to look at him. I even over at our place, we still have his photo up and candles and all of that. Because he shouldn't be gone. Such a pity. That's how you'd feel. And this man had so much to give. And uh, many of the people working in Shalom, they are graduates of here. And I'm sure there will be more in the future. So um, let me just close so and to say, I am really delighted to be here. And let us continue to try and implement the rationale that I just explained at the beginning that about African conflict environments to help the gospel value take deep root, peace, truth, justice, and mercy and to achieve sustainable development. Let us address the issue, which is a huge problem along the eastern coast of Africa at the moment of religious ideological extremism. Let us bear in mind that to understand what are the underlying causes. And many of you people will say, you hear people saying religion is the underlying cause, but I just stress one point, that religion is not the underlying cause, but it becomes a major factor when it is preoccupied by quantitative institutional membership rather than qualitative spiritual transformation. In other words, when the institutions become more important than the message, let us always in our lives be true to the message 
And let us never forget when we're dealing with people and dealing in conflict zones, the whole issue of conflict memory. Because as you know, conflict has a memory that's resilient, it's robust, it's moored in culture, and unfortunately and frequently, it is distorted by false or erroneous historical narratives. So let us live those values of being people of peace, truth, and not just perceptional truth, people of justice, and ultimately people of mercy, because that is the man that our great friend that we are honoring today was, and he's still looking down on us. He was all of that. He lived it authentically. He lived it authentically, peace, truth, justice, and mercy. May he rest in peace. And it's been an honor to be invited here today and to be with you. And I have no doubt the relationship is going to continue many years into the future. May I just finish up here with Father Keefe? Many times we were waiting for for, for Professor Ramoka in Shalom, and we'd ask where, where was he, and someone would say, he's over at the Jesuits, right? I checked with Father Keith, and he said, no, we thought he was over with you. <laughs> but he was doing so many good things, you can be sure wherever he was, he was doing good. May he rest in peace, amen. Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, comprehensive presentation. Um, it helps us to recall who Professor Omoka was. It also reminds us of all his contributions, some of which many of us may not have known, like how he impacted communities and his passion for conflict resolution. So thank you. And now we move on to our next speaker. Um, we move to the faculty testimonies. We're going to hear from Professor Omoka's uh, very good colleagues, beginning with Father Gaspar Sonwa, Hekima University College. Welcome, Father. Thank you very much, Lucy. Thank you, everyone. Allow me to say a few things about uh, this great uh, scholar whom we are honoring today and thanking God as a gift to us all. Socrates, the Greek philosopher who lived before Jesus Christ, once he said, there is only one good that is knowledge, and one evil, that is ignorance. Professor Moka, whom we celebrate today, knew only one good, that is knowledge. I met a prof in 2009, when I became the director of the Kima Institute of Peace Studies, and uh, international relations, which is uh, famously known IPSA. I remember one day I had a long conversation with him on how to make IPSA to be the best center for peace studies and international relationship, international relation uh, in Africa. He used to joke by saying that natives, that is Africans, are poor and fight every day because of lack of critical knowledge. Academic excellence was the way of life of Professor Moka. I think it is not an exaggeration if one could say that your Prof. Omoka was one of the best academicians in Kenya in the world. 
Omoka was an exemplary academician. Allow me to mention a few uh, the experiences or testimon testimonies which show that the prof was a great scholar. Prof Omoka was an excellent uh, lecturer, uh, as the uh, others have already uh, said. He taught with passion and dedication and great humility. For the bibliographies, for instance, used in his courses, he chose the best authors. And he was always informed of the best new books, which were good and relevant for the courses he was teaching. You could say, I quote him, Father Gaspar, there is an excellent book on statistics and self center. And I have told them to keep it for IPSA. End of quote. And several occasions, I went with the prof to buy those books at the site center. Prof. Moka also had the passion to empower students through quality education. For quality education, I mean, he suggested that we had to teach students how to analyze data for themselves instead of giving other, pe other people to do that. Uh, uh, prof was his idea and uh, I, I took it and it was an excellent idea that when the students go for research and then come back, instead of um, looking for some people to help them to analyze the data, uh, Professor Moka uh, volunteered without even asking for uh, extra man money to teach the students themselves to analyze the data. So it was a great uh, profit for the students. First, they became champions on how to analyze uh, data, which means if you, you are capable of doing that, you will be valuable everywhere you will be, uh, even working with the, uh, Dr. Uh, Patrick in his uh, international organization. You don't need anybody to help you, and some will need some money, and some will cheat you, and sometimes even students try to cheat the faculty of Lipsa. So, uh, we, uh, Professor Moka was uh, really good, and I thank him uh, so much uh, for that uh, initiative. Prof. Omoka believed that this continent will be transformed by people who have discipline in academic endeavor. So he instilled discipline in students and raised the academic standards of IPSA. Academic discipline had to go hand in hand with the respect for headlines, especially in submission, submitting uh, term papers and uh, um, thesis. Since Dr. Omoka, Professor Omoka rather, was insisting that the, the students were supposed to analyze data of their uh, research, all the students were presenting or submitting uh, their thesis on time. And no one was late. And all of them, um, they were graduating after two years. They can testify for that. With his rigor, uh, some students were even uh, shedding tears. Uh, but uh, Prof Professor Moka would say, uh, when a student uh, sheds tears, you keep quiet, and when he, she, she or he is sober, now continue the conversation. When uh, I joined HIPSA as a director at the time and a lecturer, I needed, I mean myself, to upgrade the knowledge in statistics, in statistics in order to give quality supervision for the thesis of the students. 
So I was about to begin the course at the University of Nairobi, but Prof. Moka offered himself to teach me the course for the whole semester. I hope none of the students knew this, uh, even in the faculty of Hipsa, uh, till today I'm revealing for the first time. He joked by saying, I caught. But Gaspar, don't waste your time to go to the uh, University of Nairobi because all the current lecturers at the moment are my students. I can teach you here and you'll be better than them. End of quote. We will miss you, Prof. Moka, especially at Ikima University College. We thank God for the gift of a Prof. And let us honor him by becoming college academicians and work hard in order to bring peace and transformation in this continent. Our exemplary, exemplary academician, Prof. Moka, rest in peace and you remain, you remain in your hearts forever. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Gaspar. Um, you can see that uh, Dr. Gaspar is just confirming what the previous speakers have said, that Dr. Uh, Dr. Professor Moka actually made a big difference and that his students treasure him, valued his teaching, and that the only way we can honor him is to continue pursuing his passion for peace building international relations. Thank you, Dr. Gaspar. And now I would like to welcome Dr. Kifle to give us a presentation. Thank you, Lisa. The Hekima administration, the principal, the dean of the Hekima College, and the dean of Gipsa, Dr. Elise, the staff members, all the students of Prof. Omoka. I just want to take this small moment to appreciate and acknowledge what Prof. Omoka was. I lived with him for 10 years and the, very close to him, he was very close to me. And we had a very good um, interaction. Um, in Omoka, there is something of Jesuit. He was a person who looks for relevance, contextual. And he is more to the place and to the people, and is sensitive and conscious of justice. And also, he had a heart for poor. And those are some of the elements of the Jesuits. And this is what we want also in the Jesuit institutions, our students always to carry their heart. And he is also a person who is not satisfied with the mediocrity. He wants people to move further and do something better. And he said, don't produce for me what so and so said here. He asks about what, what is from here, from Africa from the more local place. We should be producing theories, not imitating theories from outside. And that's Omoka. Omoka is a humble person. To the point that he wouldn't like me always to call it prof. He said, just call me Omoka. 
Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dad. Everything is okay? Good. Okay. Anyway, um, he, well, I said no. It's more for me as acknowledgement and respect to you because we are Africans and we respect others. So whatever you say, bro, I'm not going to stop to say bro. So let's not argue on that one. So it's okay. Um, it was very humble, that's one. Secondly, he does respect people. He respects people. Um, but at the, at the same time, he has a red line that he did not cross. Someone who looks very shy outside, I mean, you assume he's a shy, because he respects people, you think he's just someone you can walk over. Don't make a mistake, he's a mocker. There is a red line, he can become a liar. You cross the line. That's a mocker. And he's very independent. You might think you know, just you know, tell him to do this and that and goes over. No, Omoka is an independent minded person. So don't, don't mess around with him when it comes to something of his. And once he has already seen this is the way he's going, that's the way he's going. But at the same time, he's a tolerant. He is a tolerant. Um, he tolerates so long as you don't pass the red line. Omuka also is a person because since we were very close, then we will talk, but he loves his students, individual. Perhaps he may look for his students a bit rough, or sometimes he might say something, but don't think like that. He loves his students to the heart. He wants always to help them as much as is possible. Imagine he was doing extra work, not pay, to support every student when it comes into these statistical issues. Whenever you need him, just get him. Once you get him, he's always there for you. Um, of course, um, but the part was so mentioned. And saying that, you know, Moka sometimes says he's in Stifle, I mean, Mixa, or other times he's in the Shalom. But the truth is that, okay, he's so, he's a person who somehow he has a difficulty to say no. He's so generous. So generous and respectful that sometimes he finds it to say no is difficult. But he has actually engaged with many good things he's doing outside. He has 101 things somewhere else. He's trying you not know, to stretch, and of course, in this situation, you can't control. If the, the time is an issue, it's not because he deliberately comes late to anything. No. He is trying, but sometimes you know, he's not able some situations of a tech. It's only the person who knows proper Moka would appreciate him, they would not even feel bad about him. And that is a person who has really given himself totally to the service. He is a professional, but he does separate you know, the two, professionalism from friendship. So when something is attached to you with your academic performance, the academic work, don't expect the prof or mock to tolerate and to say, it's okay that we are friends, so I will not touch you. No. You saw that even when during the defense period. He's a straightforward, isn't he? He's a straightforward. He will speak his mind directly. Doesn't matter whether he's a, that person is, a, I don't know, the top president of the country or the world. When he doesn't agree, he doesn't agree. When it comes to that professional level, that is one of his red lines. He does not tolerate that. He really speak directly. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't like you. As a friend, he is your friend. But he will 
maybe try to make it a bit gentler, but in your scale, you want to think in that. Professor Moka is African. That's one of his red lines. Don't cross when it comes to Africa. Let's not cross the line. There he will stand, he will stick, and you may get surprised. At the same time, he's not a naive Africanist, he's very critical. I think this was mentioned by uh, Gaspar. He's very critical. He does criticize, of course, even ruthlessly, fellow Africans. And in fact, he uses the term, he's native. You know, but he would never use that term. When it comes to non-Africans, he will never use that term. He will say, don't try to mess around when it comes to Africa. But within the inside, he's also critical. He can say, you are not doing the right thing. That is uh, Prof. Omoka. Uh, as I said earlier on, also, he wants to say, Why do you always you know, vomit? The theory is, you know, somebody said outside to come to study Africa and tells you about Africa when you are there. In a way, it's a challenge, really, to say, What are you doing? You know, that type of thing, underlying, of course, it was so gentle, it was so respectful, even when we do our research. So, but you could hear his voice deep down saying, No, I know that. I read my so I know that. What about the you know, hours from here? Can we be influenced rather than just being always influenced from outside and told about our own issues by somebody else who doesn't even know fully what you feel and what you undergo? What is a mocker? Also, highly spiritual. He doesn't, you know, uh, you, you tell, you know, advertise outside his spiritual, but you could see in his way of living and his passion. I think also maybe true to his, the, his Quaker identity. The Quakers are very good at this, you know, they incarnate their life in the social world. And the Prof. Moka is gentle, quiet, doesn't talk much, doesn't even talk about this spiritual thing. In fact, it, took, it was a long time I knew that Prof. Prof. Moka was even a Christian. It was more of a, like he speaks more academic, very you know, out there, but I didn't know that he was actually a Christian. And one day he told me, oh, I'm a Quaker, I'm a Quaker. And he does follow, I mean, he goes to their prayer on Sundays. But you wouldn't know that this is the man that would go. But you could see, if you are an observant, you could see in his life, it's the way they respect and the way they reflect. And the man who lives his life is that integrity, the man of integrity. So, what do we conclude from all this? The challenge that I want to conclude, I take from this, to me, all of us, specifically to the students, the students of Prof. Omoka, wherever you are, whatever you are doing. If you honor your guru, you honor your teacher, maybe this is a challenge that you carry. One point is that honesty and dedication. Honesty and dedication. Please, wherever you are working, whatever you are doing, be honest to yourself with what you do, so that what you say and what you preach outside there actually is in harmony with what you are deep down inside, what you think and believe and what you do in your life. It's one thing to blame people being, you know, they are not doing good thing, they are not in this. After that, we can tear down people. 
But in my office, in my respective office, do I reflect what I say? Am I really of a service in really making sure that the people are not met, you know, somehow feel uh, like this is not where they belong to? Am I a person who can make people feel when they go back and say, really their heart is touched? And they say, what a good person. God said, put such a person. And that a person itself, whether the thing is yes or no, doesn't matter, but at least the way you treat and you handle people, and you see your brother and your sister. And in fact, especially when these people are even poorer, that you give more attention to the poor than even the rich who comes with a you know, cravat and a you know, suit like me here, and you know, with collars, where you can stand and say, yes, father, or no, so. And would you give more attention to the one who is less privileged? I know wherever you are, I think there's a challenge that we learn from Prof. Omoka. Prof. Omoka is not differential. He, whether you are president of the country or whether you are down there, for him, you are all the same. He will treat you with respect and with dignity, so long as you don't cross the line. Prof. Moka, again, with his statement, tells us always to be leaders, influencers. We are the ones to influence, not allow others just simply influence us in our life. So in a way, we should be very open. We can listen, of course, what people say. It doesn't mean that what others say is wrong. But we shouldn't be slave. That's all what the point is. Shouldn't be slave. When you say something is wrong, be able to say it is wrong and give you a good reasons. And be always influencer of uh, you know, the policies and the directions that things are going. You don't need to be there in front as a leader or whatever. You can be a leader from you know, behind the curtain. The influence you can create to the rest of the world. That's what I've got the heart of Jesuit's uh, uh, intention too, is that you we hope that all those who undergo through our institutions are people who are influencers of the policies and the directions of how things go. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever decisions are being taken, behind there you should be such a person because you can only be influencing person, influential, only when people respect your dignity, uh, say you are self-respecting person, you have a dignity and you know that uh, integrity. You are honesty to you are honesty to yourself. That makes people really pay attention to what you say and what you do. That's why you become someone who can influence the way the direction of situations go. So that is a challenge that Prof. Moka lives with us. And the third, of course, the last point I wanted to say, that when the Lord says time is up, it's time is up. Whether you do everything to put a mask for yourself and put a glass shield or anyone, when it is time, it's time. The way we go, the way we die, can differ. But the day that is said is the day that is said. I was shocked when I heard Prof. Moka died out of uh, Corona. It was in my wildest dream that Prof. Moka will be touched with this. With other things, fine, that I would say, okay, but not with our Corona. He was very careful. He was very careful. He was taking care of, the, you know, following all the procedures that are said. But when they say, no, he died with Corona. How? Prof. Moka? No. But that happened. Again, to say that, whatever we do, when the time is up, time is up. 
but what does it draw from our teachings? That we live our life always prepared. Do our what is what it takes from our side, be ready. When it comes, it comes, we go. There is no return back. Prof. Omar can live the life of integrity, integrate these social, psychological, spiritual lives together. That's what makes you to human. human. Please, let's learn from this. And at this moment, Prof. Omar is here with us. Please, they are watching like us. He's not dead in the land. Okay, physically, he's not in the land. You know, Prof, thank you for everything that you have done for us and what you have done for us. And I think we will receive your help. Now that you are with the Lord, pray for us. May the soul of the Prophet Muhammad rest in peace. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Dr. Kipler. As a beneficiary of um, Professor Omoka's think, uh, teaching, um, I would like to reveal that during our uh, thesis writing, and especially at the stage of data analysis, most of us ended up at his desk in his office for further advice or further guidance, even under the supervision of other, uh, uh, other lecturers because we believed that he was the best in statistical analysis. He was very passionate and his problem solving capabilities were outstanding. And most of us knew that at that stage, we would benefit a lot from him. So regardless of the supervisor, we ended up uh, with him. And we would like to honor him and thank him for that. Next. Um, do we have uh, the late Professor Moka's daughter, Miss Nasike Moka? Um, yes. Okay, thank you. Online? Yes. All right. Let me see. Can we turn your video on? Um, it is turned on. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. On behalf of uh, Hekima University College, I would like to invite you to give us your address. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so my name is Nasike and I'm Professor Omoka's daughter. As you all know, academics and research played a very important role in my father's life. Um, and I just want to thank Hekima for organizing this memorial and for all of those um, who have shared such wonderful memories of him. As his daughter though, I would like to take this opportunity to share a few stories that show a different side of him that you may not have seen. <clears throat> so eating healthy was very important to my dad, um, except when it came to corn oil. I don't know if his body could not digest the oil, but he always craved it. And he would pour, he would always pour corn oil all over his cooked food before he ate it. Whenever a meal was served, you would be guaranteed that there was always a bottle of corn oil there. Sometimes he would pack our school lunches and keep in mind again, it was all about the health content of the food and not how it tasted. His favorite thing to pack for my brother Waswa and I was peanut butter and cheese sandwiches. No, they did not taste very good, but they were healthy. Um, he also liked to brush our shoes for school sometimes. And I'm not sure how long it took him, but it seemed like he was doing it for hours at a time. He would polish and shine them so well that you could literally see your reflection in the shoes you would almost hate um, to get them dirty. Um, we, weren't, we weren't really allowed to watch TV during the week. He always emphasized the importance of studying and reading, um, but sometimes Waswa and I would sneak downstairs to watch TV when he wasn't home. 
there was a window in front of the TV that we could see um, out to the gates and we would see him coming home in, in the distance. So as soon as we would see him, we would turn off the TV and run upstairs quickly into our rooms and pretend to be studying very hard. I always wondered if he knew what we were doing. Um, having children now of my own, I'm sure he knew what we were doing, but he just never said anything. Another memory I have is always being excited for end of semester exams because he had a lot of student papers to grade. I was always happy when there were multiple choice questions because he would allow me to grade papers and I absolutely loved doing that. Interestingly enough, my husband Wesley is a university professor and to this day, I still help grade papers even though I'm not a teacher myself. Um, my husband Wesley and my father were able to meet in 2012. Uh, I wasn't sure how the interaction would go, but they talked nonstop. They both had a love for research and an interest in Q methodology. Um, and my father actually gave Wesley some advice or a lot of advice on some research he was doing at the time. As a child, I didn't recognize, <clears throat> sorry, as a child, I didn't realize the importance of academics. And I would get upset when I wasn't allowed to watch TV or to perceived or to do what I perceived to be fun things. But now as I look back at my life, um, I know I owe a lot of my success to my father because he's instilled in me the importance of education and always working hard. I miss him so much, thank you. Thank you, Nasike, for that very emotional presentation. And we uh, in Hekima University would like to assure you that we are doing whatever we can um, to uphold his uh, legend and that we are remembering him too with a lot of passion. Thank you. Next. Uh, Professor uh, taught several students and would like to invite Ms. Sabrina Barua, the current president. Uh, I would like, uh, first of all, to thank everyone um, for affording me this opportunity to address you at this important forum. <clears throat> um, we have convened here this afternoon to engage and celebrate a man a Pan-African man who to us was more than a professor. He was a mentor, a father, and an incredible academician. Um, to the theme of, um, of the day, although many of us um, associate academic excellence with um, excelling in scholastic activities, like achieving high grades and superior performance, um, for Professor Omoka, excellence was um, far more than uh, just that. He believed uh, academic excellence is more than just making good grades. For him, it was 
maximum development of our intellectual capacities and skills in service to humanity, as Father Kiki has said. Um, so it is important for us um, young people to have this holistic understanding, especially of Africa and the challenges it faces so that we are able to find solutions that are specific to our continent. Whether those solutions are um, technological, political, um, cultural, or otherwise. So the question remains, how do we do this? as an institution to higher land. Professor Moka in his many lectures and uh, would propose a process of Africanizing the curricula. And he always say that um, by doing this, um, it doesn't mean that uh, here, uh, we are rejecting the existing um, knowledge domains. No. He said there's nothing wrong with the knowledge uh, that came from Europe. He was simply advocating for the inclusion and promotion of knowledge that has this far been underrepresented in higher education curriculum. He believed that it was not enough. So as scholars, he reiterated that uh, we must understand who we are and where we come from. I remember there's this time um, where he challenged us in class and told us since we are international relations students, and since we are going to be studying uh, world leaders, their traits, their works, he advised us that it's paramount for us to study more of our African leaders who made their uh, mark in the history books. He asked us to understand who these people were, what they stood for, to be able to contextualize their life's work and see how it can um, impact the modern society. Every time he would encourage us in class to give examples that we can relate to, he would say, talk of Mugabe, talk of um, Magufuli, you know, talk of Luya Nation, <laughs> talk of Kamba Nation. And he would call us by the places that we are coming from. Like he would say, Tanzania, um, Zimbabwe, you know, he felt this um, pride of associating us with the countries that we are coming from. He was always passionate about the continent and its people. He would encourage us to be critical thinkers and problem solvers and not necessarily read a book and produce the same notes to him during exams, as particularly also um, talked about it. For example, in between classes, he would ask a question and tell us, whoever answers this question will get an A on a silver plan. I tell you, we would fight for that A. <laughs> we would fight for that A. And he was true to his wife, you know? He wouldn't like give us back our papers, but, um, you would know whatever grade you have achieved to deserve it. Whether it's a C, whether it's a B, whether it's an A, you will know that you fought for, for that way. Um, great lessons we learned from a man who will live to remember and strive to emulate. As I conclude, um, I would like to register my sincere gratitude to the Kima University College and in particular, Hikima Institute of Peace Study and International Relations for this forum that has brought us together to celebrate a man we looked up to. Thank you, everyone, and God bless us all. May Professor Wonka's uh, soul continue resting with the angel. Thank you. Professor has taught uh, several students, and we have just heard from the current uh, president, Hekima University College. Would also like to have some testimonial from um, Pixar alumni, 
namely Reina Joyce from Maiji. Okay, we'll begin with Reina. Then um, followed by um, Leonie. Then we'll have myself. Then we'll have C.B. Nogondo. And finally, Sister Jane. So in that order, can we begin with Reina? Okay. Oh, she, she got it. Is she online, maybe? Online. Oh. <laughs> okay. 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 Welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is um, Emmanuel Tembo. I hail from the Democratic Party of Congo. I'm uh, an alumnus of this institute. Uh, yes. After my studies here, I went for uh, for PhD in South Africa. And for your information, I defended this morning my dissertation. <laughs> for me, it is a good inclusion because, you know, I started my journey of uh, peace studies here and I and, and ended up here at the Kima Institute of Peace and International Relations uh, and, uh, and Peace Studies. I'm very happy for that. Sorry for my English, I grew in a French speaking country, so if you don't, you know, uh, pick some words, it's because of that. Anyway, so I'm here. Uh, when I heard of, uh, of this conference, I made sure I also I attend. I came a bit late, but I made sure at least, even if it is for five minutes, I'll be there also to honor eh, our former lecturer, Professor Omoka Wanakai. Uh, when I heard of the sad news of the demise of our Professor Omoka, I was in South Africa, in university, and uh, of course, you know, I said a baobab, a big tree has fallen down. And because, you know, he was a, an outstanding professor, an outstanding lecturer. He taught us for two years, that is between uh, 2011 and 2013, and uh, he is among the winning squad here in, uh, in uh, at Ekima. Can recall Professor uh, Dr. Kifre here. Eh? Gaspar is there, Okongo and others. You can see, I uh, don't see them around here. But these are the people who taught us eh? this, uh, the, what you can call the academic rigor. And uh, on my side, I kept that, that momentum up to now to work hard. So Professor Moka is among those who, who taught us to be very serious in our studies and uh, we made it. I remember the time we, we came for, uh, uh, after our data collection and now the time of data analysis. He was, I don't know how he got this information that myself and uh, Tembo, uh, I'll do a, a qualitative uh, a data analysis. He called me, he said, Father, because of some priest, he called me Father. I heard that you are going to, to do uh, this qualitative analysis. And you know that you are among my best students. But you don't, don't you see that you, you did not do justice to me? I said, but now, Professor, I made peace with my mind. I'll do qualitative analysis. He said, no, please do quantitative analysis. So I, I insisted also on my, on my position until he said, okay, let us compromise. At least do something related to the, the statistics that I told you. So now I said, okay, no problem. Then he said, bring your, 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 your paper, your, your thesis. I brought it and then I said, you see this part. What you can do with you, let us do at least the simple frequency. And that, that's what we did actually. <laughs> the simple frequency with him and uh, another lady who was also helping, helping me and uh, by the name of uh, 
a Judy or Judith Kenza Miller from Tanzania. So now you see, for me, I, I saw in him that, uh, that concern of the, of the lecture. And you see that he is a father, a mentor, an academician. He was really a mentor and an academician to make sure what he taught is, uh, is put into practice. And that is very good for that. I think he is our model in many areas, and especially in this academic rigor in mentorship for students and those who uh, want to, to grow in uh, the work of academia. So thank you very much for organizing this forum. I consider myself as a product of Professor Omoka. And uh, as I, I put it earlier, it is among the, the, the winning squad that taught us here at the Kima. And today we are honored, Professor uh, Dr. Kifle and uh, uh, Gaspar and others, we are honored to see your former student here who is now a doctor today. For your information, uh, the defense was very good, and I was um, <laughs> the marks were very high, very, very high 360 over 400. That's 95 percent. So, that is thank you very much. And again, for your information, our graduation will take place in South Africa in Bloemfontein on 20th April. So, continue praying for us, continue supporting us the way you can. You know, that is uh, the way we should be. Thank you very much. Let us keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we appreciate your being here all the way from South Africa. Okay, so um, next we shall have Leonie Abeta, also a beneficiary of Professor Omok. Thank you so much, Christy. I wasn't on the program, but he just came to ask me whether I can say something. I don't have a speech, I can speak from my heart. Um, Professor Omoka was also my supervisor. And once you had uh, Omoka as your spot, you knew you were going to work very hard and very smart. My study also, my thesis was about more of qualitative uh, kind of data, but he encouraged me to also use um, quantitative data, and I'm so grateful for that. Something also I noted from Professor Omoka. I don't know how he knew us. He knew each and every one of us by name. Sometimes he come and tell you, you know, you did very well <laughs> in your paper. I'm proud of you. And you wonder, how did he know me? Because he never called me by my name in the class. But he knew each and every one of us. And whenever I had an issue, he come to you and tell you, we need to do ABCD in this area. He was a true mentor. Professor Omek Omoka was very smart. What his daughter said about um, cleaning shoes, I was always looking at his shoes. Very clean, polished. Yet I never knew, I never saw him driving a car. And I wondered, how did he do that? To have always his shoes very well polished. His shirt, everything was clean, very ordered, even in his office. Everything very ordered. You could see someone who is very uh, smart, ordered, um, a great professional. You go to the office, you talk about your school, your, um, your study. And once it ends, it ends there. Then there's nothing like going left, right. It was about really a great uh, man with integrity and excellence. He was very punctual also. When you had a, a, an appointment with him, you find him already 10 minutes before you in his office waiting for you. Um, he had a lot, a lot of humor. His class of statistics or methods, research methods, was never boring because 
he, he has a way, he has a way of explaining statistics in simple way that everyone would love his um, thinking. And you get the concept very easily, the way he would share um, the contents of statistics. He was a great fanatic. He loved Africa. And he wanted Africa to be close to the issues of Africa and make our own contributions to resolving issues that our continent is suffering from. I'm so grateful to have um, met Professor Omoka and as one great um, poet said in French, le mort ne sont pas mort, meaning the, the dead are not dead. He is alive, as someone also said, and you continue to watch over all students in the Kenya and any other engagements he was um, taking in his life. Thank you very much. Thank you for presenting as well. Um, I was to speak next, but I believe I've been very well represented by my fellow alumni. So I will not add much. Um, the previous speakers have said most of what I wanted to say, but I will just add one or two things. Um, looking at Professor walking into uh, Hekima University College, it would not have been easy to tell what was in his head. He looked very humble. He was a gentleman, he was very calm. Nobody would have guessed he was a statistician or a social science uh, researcher until he opened his mouth. Then you realize how much was, um, how much knowledge he held. So that is something that only those who went through his system uh, would appreciate. A true, uh, true evidence of humility, humility in itself. So that is how I describe him, apart from uh, the other adjectives that we have given him. He was protective of the African continent. And in all his lessons, as Leonie has just said, he was very uh, contemporary. He would give very, very contemporary examples. And if something happened in South and Sudan today, if he came to class, then the statistics class would focus on that. If something happened in his backyard in Kakamega, then he would give us those examples. Uh, his role models were other um, Pan-Africanists, such as Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere, and he also loved Magufuli. When Magufuli came into power, he would pick out those ideologies that he thought were, were, were uh, valuable from Magufuli's ideologies, and he would bring them. So it would always relate to uh, what he said, it would always relate because his examples were really contemporary. And um, finally, I think uh, his exposure to other systems like the American political systems and his uh, in-depth knowledge, wide reading is an example that we should all emulate that in academic, for you to pursue academic excellence, you need to read a lot. And uh, well, many academicians read a lot. Uh, professor, in addition to reading a lot, he encouraged you know, localizing our critical thinking. Uh, and a politician from America, for example, thinks ABC, how do we relate that to our situation? And uh, that really helps us to pursue our critical thinking as well. So finally, the only gift that I think that we can give a professor is a prayer, now that he has left us physically. And maybe Hekima University needs to consider pursuing uh, his, his, um, his passion of Africanism by producing probably a publication put together some, some documents, some publications in his honor. Uh, we can all come together and conduct some research and probably produce a publication. Thank you.
we have um, I think it's right? Chief guest, Dr. Patrick Levin, Dean, Father Elise. Hello, can you hear me? Chief guest, Dr. Patrick Levin, Dean, Father Elise, Reverend Dr. Father Gaspar Kifle, our online guests. Faculty members, those here are in. Good afternoon. So I'm grateful for having for this opportunity to stand to stand here and also just to bring a tribute to, to my late supervisor, Professor Moka. And so he taught us the such methods of social sciences in our first year. And almost every class began with a humor, and no class was ever a formal lecture. They put it in a way. So it was a sustained, rich, and demanding dialogue between a professor and his students. And so in my last year, it was a week before his demise. Uh, I think three days, two days before his demise, I tried to call him and he was struggling to talk. I didn't know that my late, my late supervisor, my late professor was sick. So on Tuesday when I came to, to school, uh, I had I decided that today I'd be waiting him and try to, to reach to reach to, to reach him to here because usually his phone was always off. And uh, Safina was the one who told me that Professor has passed on. And so it really hit me hard. Uh, so he took the time to read my thesis carefully despite his busy schedule. His vow ties always put a smile on our faces. His energy and devotion to research questions and to Ekima were galvanizing, and his kindness and generosity and availability to his students made him truly a gentleman as well as a scholar. We miss you, we miss you, and carry on with your legacy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And to wind up the testimonial, it's our very own sister Jane Kima. Thank you, Madam Lucy. All protocols of that, that alone of the evening. Thank you very much, Jane. I think a lot has been said about uh, Professor Moka. Mine I give is directly how I related with him. When I was first admitted to Gibson, I looked at the program and the units, and I saw statistic. And actually, I knew that I'm not good in maths. And I realized that uh, he was the one to take us for statistics. I was very nervous when he entered the class the first time. I listened and actually have to admit, I had nothing. I was only planning, how will I approach him? After that, I went to him, I said, is it compulsory that I have to take this unit? He said, you native African. I was so upset, I have to tell you the truth. I thought he abused me. You avoid what is best for you. I say, doctor, this is not good. Do the theologians take statistics? 
he said, I'm not very sure. I want to go now, change the course and go there because I knew I will never pass. He told me I will journey with you and I'll walk with you. Actually, he journeyed with me. The first uh, exam or cut we, exam we had, I walked, I waited for him and I asked him, how much do people pay for receiving an exam? He said, who is receiving? Because I'm sure I'll fail and I want to know. He told me, I'm not very sure. Go to the account office, they'll tell you how much people pay. But don't pay, wait till you see your results. And, I, and actually, he never saw our results, but I waited. I asked him his number. He told me, I don't give out my numbers. I only give to those that I'm supervising. You are too young in the program. Everything that he said made me angry. But he had a purpose. He really wanted to provoke me. And from there, we became very good friends. Every Saturday, I, I used to come every Saturday to study or maybe there was something. He would call me in his office and say, how is the going? And he'd make me feel in class that I'm the best. And actually, I have to admit it, I became the best with, with statistics. In a nutshell, when we remember Professor Moka, I remember Professor Moka, a man that wanted every student to prevail and every student to achieve something that you go back home with. And as Dr. Professor Divine, Father Divine said, he wanted us to finish school and we come out, out with something good. So when I was going for the research to the field, I came back and he told me, sister, I hope you never brought me stories. I want numbers. So he was very serious with numbers. I said, Pro, I've come with a few numbers because I did do my traffic thing. Then he said, I'm sure you are not traffic yourself, you are back safely. Those jokes, you just joke them. And you could not imagine him saying about that. To the end of his life, somebody called me, a friend of mine called me, who is a neighbor where he lived, and said, Your professor is sick and is going to hospital. And I was getting ready to go and see him on a Sunday. And when we are getting ready to see him on, to go and see him on a Sunday, personally, I remember that we had COVID and the COVID people were very, very frightened. I said, let me wait, I might go on Tuesday. Unfortunately, that Tuesday around 11, I was told he passed on. For me, a father, a mentor, a academician has gone, but his legacy is still with us. All the testimony we have given, and all other people that are with us online. As Pan-Africans, he believed so much on justice. And no wonder he was working with Father Divine because he believed on justice. And this justice was justice for everybody and expression for African, for the African continent. So as we say that we are mourning him, actually we are celebrating a life well lived and a continuous life as a my colleague Lucy has said, as hipster students, those that are there and those have been, let's see what can we do to remember our great professor, our great father, who wanted an excellency to each and every student. And as Dr. Kipley said, I was confused whether he's a Catholic or his which religion. He talked so much about Kakamega rainforest. So I thought maybe he'd never believe in a God, he believed in a forest. <laughs> Everything was Sakamega where the rain comes from. But I think he was talking about his, himself being a true African, in an African continent. So as we remember him, may his soul rest in peace. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Jean. So as we approach the end of our program, I can see a number of keywords uh, coming up that could be associated with the late program. Many of you have said several things, and I'm sure if we were to sit in, in class now and we are asked to construct the keywords that can, we can identify with you, we'll see words coming up like research, conflict resolution, critical thinking, 
humility, pan-Africanism, mentorship, academician, justice, peace, um, love for the less fortunate, and so on, many, many words. So that means that we have uh, a responsibility to honor him, and probably we can think of ways that we can summarize this and finish Professor Wamoka's unfinished business. When people die, they all leave unfinished business, but we can at least move his unfinished business to the next level. Thank you. So thank you very much for listening to me. I was just coming in for the would have been moderator. Unfortunately, he's not here till now. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, what is remaining, we shall have a vote of thanks from Dr. Gaspar. Then we shall have a closing prayer. Then we will move outside for the tree planting ceremony in his honor. Then Hekima University College invites you for a cup of tea after that. Then we can have some informal discussions before we leave. So welcome to the first. Thank you, uh, great MC, Lucy. What would I say after this great, great um, afternoon honoring the gift and the life of our Professor Moka? Allow me to, uh, to thank uh, people and to thank everybody. Um, and when you start saying thank you, it's very easy um, <laughs> to forget uh, uh, people like Itembo, uh, Emmanuel. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Patrick Gibay. Thank you very much for the uh, keynote. Really, it was great and I was uh, so uh, pleased uh, what you have shared with us. Thank you very much and continue to be a great person like the way you are. Thank you very much. As I think, uh, Dr. Divine, I would like uh, we to thank um, Dr. Elise, our dean. Um, really, he has done uh, well, that he did so well, and he's not here. He had another meeting, that's why he had to, uh, to, uh, to go there. Uh, uh, the meeting. Um, Dr. Kifley, thank you very much for honoring me also this afternoon uh, from Mwangaza. And when I asked you to come, will you said yes, a bold yes. Thank you very much and continue to be a good young man. And then mentioning uh, Dr. Elise, uh, in my Culture. If you mention the name of some uh, someone and the she appears, we say we live long life. And, uh, so I don't know how long, maybe two hundred years, um, three hundred. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like also, in a special way, to thank the committee uh, which really put together uh, this event. Uh, and uh, the uh, Okok Bernard was our uh, chairperson. Um, and we could see the communication which went through. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Really, the committee, the Okok, our president of the Student Union, uh, Sister Jane Leoni, um, uh, Nelly, uh, now was supposed to be here, but uh, she's uh, under another uh, what, uh, um, engagement as uh, she's following uh, uh, what? Uh, yeah? she didn't, oh, so really you are hearing me. Thank you very much for all what you have done. Uh, people like uh, Richard uh, Kaketo, 
and Opera also is uh, online, and so many uh, who were involved in these preparations, uh, without uh, forgetting Opondo, uh, Stephen, um, thank you for uh, everything. Um, as I continue to thank um, people who made uh, uh, this um, uh, event, I would like in a special way to thank the, the family, uh, especially uh, Nasike, uh, you gave a very moving testimony of your dad. So we pray for you and all other siblings uh, continue to live the legacy of uh, your dad, Professor Omoka. We are proud of you and your family. Um, whom uh, could we uh, extend um, our gratitude? Uh, Lillian, who is not here, the, the, uh, the secretary, she did a lot, really a lot. There are some people you cannot see, but uh, have played a, a big role. Um, Lillian, wherever you are, if you are following us, uh, really we are so grateful for what uh, you have done. Um, without uh, forgetting uh, the, uh, the who, Sewe uh, Lucy, uh, the MC, you are a great, really, MC. Lucy, wonderful. Uh, next time, and we are not prepared. See, sometimes you have to be prepared psychologically, in such, but as if you prepared this since last week. Thank you very much, uh, Lucy. Uh, you are so wonderful. Um, the IT, oh, where is he? Uh, it's hiding. Uh, you know, there are some people uh, who are very, uh, really important, um, but you cannot hear them. Uh, but, but without uh, Abel and the, uh, his team uh, with the Beata, uh, no, oh, we couldn't really have such a, a beautiful occasion this afternoon. And also, I extend uh, our gratitude to Pamela. Uh, Pamela was the, she was the one who designed uh, this. Uh, we call it a banner. Um, it's so wonderful. Uh, now, uh, with the uh, prof here, this is amazing. Thank you so much, Pamela. She was not feeling well. Uh, the photo opportunity. Oh, uh, let me when we uh, uh, when we go to, to plant uh, trees. Uh, thank you uh, for this. Um, what could I say um, on this occasion? I uh, could see um, uh, my uh, former uh, student Okum uh, Jacob. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much uh, for honoring this wonderful occasion. So, uh, thank you for everybody uh, for this, and uh, we are so grateful. Um, Dr. Elise, uh, most of the time you are not here, but uh, personally, I'm so delighted. Very well, and it uh, was organized, and the program went very well. Uh, last, but not uh, uh, the uh, least, as we, we go out for the uh, planting trees and eventually uh, what, um, the refreshments. Um, Dr. Patrick, as we thank you, um, you know you came uh, driving and you left all your work this afternoon and your generosity. Uh, you are a good man. <laughs> no, some, no, sometimes, uh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, but uh, when I know now we'll be calling you during Lent and season. But because maybe, uh, uh, so maybe, could you uh, come and stand here? Is that in order? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and you are so obedient. Uh, so the president of the student union, please. Huh? So we have something symbolic, just a symbolic, Patrick, <laughs> uh, symbolic to say 
Thank you for really uh, for honoring this vocation. And uh, um, we say, Patrick, uh, with the, uh, this token, uh, will remain a good memory for our mentor, our academician, um, and um, uh, the father, uh, Prof. Omoka. So MC, you are still uh, here uh, now. Um, the after the bottle of things is a short prayer as you proceed. So uh, you have a Roman caller, maybe uh, <laughs> please uh, come and give us a, a concluding prayer. Thank you so much, Dr. Kiki. Thank you, Dr. Gaspar. After the vote of thanks we have done to the elderly, and the one for whom belongs honor and glory, to God, Almighty Father, Almighty Son, and Almighty Spirit. We acknowledge and we express our deep gratitude for what you are and what you do for us. You conceived us and you brought us into this world to be your image, to express your goodness, truth. Love. And we thank you for each and every person that you have created, for all your creation, and in a specific way today for Prof. Omoka Wanakai. You have called your servant, and we have deep trust in you that you have welcomed him back home. Thank you for this. Thank you for your mercy and graciousness. Thank you for allowing us to have this opportunity, this moment. Remember, your blood son, Dr. Omoka, Dr. Professor Omoka Wanakai, and the work she has done and the impact she has done in our life. But through that, you have given us the challenge to, to do also our own mission in this life, to represent you, to honor you in our life, and to thank you in our life. We ask you at this moment, gracious Creator, the Father, bless the family of uh, Prof. Moka, that you may grant them strength they need to encourage more, but also be continuously inspired by their beloved Moka. Move on in life and live their life as you expect them to do. Bless us and bless everything and bless Hekima University College and the Institute. That the college, the institution, continue honoring you, doing what it is supposed to do. On, for your own greater honor and glory and for the good of humanity. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Excuse me to cut in uh, once again, uh, because I think uh, that's for us to everybody, but we need to thank him as well. Because Gaspar was, was uh, coordinating this whole event. 
and he did a great job. And he's a man of all circumstances. Uh, I had to excuse myself because I had a mental speaking, which I did not predict. And so you saw how he did it very well. So that's why thank you so very much. So now we are going uh, downstairs uh, in the garden. Uh, we go to plant the big trees. We are building a triangle, which we call a mother triangle. So uh, after the, um, the planting of the tree, we come back here for the session. Thank you.